Now, I know that too much preamble before jumping into the code is the worst, but there's a few things I need to cover before we get started so that everything is easier for you. So hang in there, I'm gonna get through this quick. Now, in the series, we're going to be using Quasar CLI, but most of these upgrades will be the same for Vue CLI and UMD. But I had to choose one, and Quasar CLI is the recommended way of uh, building Quasar applications, so that will, that's what we'll be using in this series. Now, most of the upgrades we'll perform in this guide you won't even need to worry about, especially if your app is small and simple. And for that reason, I'm going to try and be both thorough and fast so that we cover everything without you getting bored to tears. Um, also, SSR is currently unavailable, but it's actively being worked on and should be in our hands soon enough. So just keep that in mind. If you're doing server-side rendered applications, then that's not really going to be possible uh, at the moment. Um, next, and this is a super important one, if you need help, please try to reproduce your bug with a code pen. We'd be super grateful for that, and 50% of the time you'll accidentally stumble across the solution yourself, and about 30% of the time we'll be able to help you straight away because a code pen makes the problem obvious, and then like the other 20% of the time, you'll help us surface a bug that's easy to fix. And I know this might sound strange, but there's nothing we love more than having a replicated bug in a code pen so that it's easy for us to work on. Okay, so I'll show you how to create a code pen quickly just so that you know that part. Uh, let's come down here and go to next.quasar.dev. And if we come up here to tools and then we click on code pen, we've got a version of the application that we can uh, change around. So this is where you would, you would uh, basically build something that creates a bug, and then you would click on the save sign. So let me just change something here. I don't know, just add a letter in there. And then I can go Control S to save that. Okay, so that's good to know. Okay, coming back now, let's go ahead and start actually upgrading the application. And I think the best thing to do will be to whack this on the side, and I might actually bring this into a smaller screen mode and throw that on the side. And then I'll just try and hide things as much as possible so that we've got a good amount of room. And we'll start following the upgrade guide. Now first, I wanna check what version of Quasar CLI I have. Quasar-V, and I'm pretty sure that you wanna be on at least 1.1.3, but you should upgrade anyway. So let's say npm upgrade-g for global, and I hope you're using npm for your global packages. That's what we recommend in the community, at Quasar slash CLI. So remember, npm for global, and then yarn for, uh, for your local development packages. All right, let me just scroll up, and it looks like I am on the latest version, so that's good. And the next thing that we can do is say Quasar Upgrade. So if you're upgrading from an older version of version 2 to a newer version, you can simply run Quasar Upgrade, and that's going to tell you uh, any packages that are out of date. So we can see here Quasar Extras is currently out of date. And then we can run Quasar Upgrade dash dash install, and that's going to go ahead and actually perform the upgrades in our package.json. So let's go ahead and run that. Sweet, that's done. Let me close this and run it again just to check that everything's running smoothly. And it looks like it is. Cool. Now scrolling down here, I can skip uh, a lot of this for now. You might want to go ahead and read it though, but we're going to skip it to keep this short. Now Quasar is no longer supporting stylus variables. So if you've been using stylus in the past, you can still use it, but you can't use the variables that Quasar provides for like things like primary colors using stylus. So we'll have to convert those variables over to SAS. Okay, so if you're using stylus in your project, you can still go ahead and install it, but once again, we won't be able to use the stylus variables anymore. I happen to love stylus, but I'm not gonna cry about it. I can't always have my way in life, so it's time to move over to SAS. And in order to do that, let me uh, just close this window here. And if we come here to source and then CSS, we can see I've got app.styl because I was using stylus. So I'm going to rename that to app.sass, so app.sass. And then let's come over here and rename the variables to sass as well. And I need to come in here and change the way that they're defined. So instead of an equal sign, in order to convert this to sass, I just change all of those into a colon. So now if I save that, things are probably going to break. Yeah, okay, so they have broken, and I believe the reason is if we go to quasar.conf, and then we search for CSS, yeah, it's, uh, it's looking for app.styl, 
but now we're using app.sass. So change that to SASS, save it, and let's open up the terminal. And we might just have to restart the server now that that's happened. Cool, looks like everything's still working, so we can move on now. That's only for people that were using Stylus. Now next it's telling us to remove some folders, and that's so that when we reinstall our packages again after upgrading to the new version of Quasar, stuff doesn't go wrong. Because if you have folders with old, stale uh, packages, sometimes that can cause some issues. So in order to fix that, we're going to go ahead and delete .quasar, move that to trash, delete node modules, move that to trash, delete yarn.lock, or if you happen to be using npm for your local packages, then you delete uh, package-lock.json, and that's all we have to do for that. So closing that off now, let's come back into our terminal. We're gonna end up having to restart our server quite a few times here. Uh, and let's say now, yarn add quasar at next, because we're now ready to start installing the new version of quasar. And this command might look a little bit different for you because it might not be called Quasar Next in the future. So just do whatever it says here. Yarn add Quasar Next, run that command and it's going to go ahead and pull in the new Quasar. Really exciting. And when that's done, we then need to run this command to install Quasar app. Okay, so there's actually two packages involved here. The Quasar package and then the Quasar slash app package. So let me go ahead and copy this and now I'll paste that command in. And when that's done, we can go ahead and start updating our lint files. So where is that? That is .eslintrc.js. So let's jump into that file. And if I come down here, uh, let's close off the terminal. Yeah, so here, notice that instead of plugin colon view uh, recommended, I now need to use this new format, okay? So it's plugin colon view, so the, the start remains the same, but then we have view three dash, and then the name of the preset we're using. So here, here, and here, I need to paste in view three dash. I'm pretty sure that's all I need to do then to update my linting package, or the linter that we're using behind the scenes. So now that I've done that, it looks like that they want us to um, update our linting packages. So let's say uh, package.json, and let's just look for the word eslint. Here we go here, here's all of our linting related packages. And I'm basically just gonna go through these one at a time and then copy paste them through. So this might take a moment, eslint config standard, eslint config standard, paste that in. Let's copy this one. ESLint plugin import, ESLint plugin import, paste that in. And then we've got ESLint plugin node, ESLint plugin node. And then we've got ESLint plugin promise, ESLint plugin promise, ESLint plugin view, ESLint plugin view. And then the last one is ESLint webpack plugin. Uh, where's that? And that doesn't exist in the list, it looks like, so let's just copy-paste that one directly under. I'm not actually entirely sure if we even need all of these packages now, or just the ones in that list. Um, so, honestly, I don't think it's important, though, because I was able to successfully upgrade just following what I just did then. So, moving on. Now that we've done that, let's edit quasar.conf. Oh, and actually, let's open up our terminal here and say yarn, now that we've done those upgrades, and it'll update those Yes, lint packages. Ah, and here it's telling us that the language uh, format has changed. So that's why my app had a whole bunch of weird language related stuff. Instead of en-us with a lowercase for us, we've now got en-us with uppercase, okay? So we're going to have uppercase after the dash. So let's look for the word framework. Actually, it's probably better to look for the word lang. Here we go. And then I need to change that to uppercase us. So save that. Moving on, by the way guys, I'm not a super fast reader. I have my own notes, which is why I'm getting through this so fast. So it's not like I'm this like amazing upgrading super person. This took me a while to prepare for this video. And now if I come over here, let's run this server again. And from memory, this is now going to give us an issue related to um, the international package. So if you're doing international type stuff, then this is going to hit an issue for you. Aha, here we go. This dependency was not found. So what I might do, in fact, how about we move this across a little bit more? I might even go full screen now. 
Yeah, but this it might that might be a little bit easier. So I want to search for the place where this is being imported. Uh, actually, better still, let's just control, control click that file. And this is where I18N, um, the international package, is being initialized in a boot file. So what I might be able to do, let's come back to the guide and I'm going to search for I18N. Here we go, this is the part related to that. And now I think I can probably just copy this here and paste it in. So if you're doing something in this boot file, do not just copy paste it in blindly. Uh, you might need to change some bits and pieces. However, I've left it as is when I first installed the project. So I can safely copy paste that in. If you need to make any changes here, then go ahead and make those changes. So let's save that. And the reason it isn't working is because we need the new release candidate of I18N. So let me just come back here. I don't need, yeah, here we go. They actually tell you here, yarn add the new release candidate version. So let's go ahead and run that command. And then I'll say quasar dev straight after that's done. And I think that will actually get rid of that problem. Okay, nice. Let's scroll up here. Looks like that's a linting problem. In fact, I think all of these might be linting related problems. Scrolling up. You might want to check this yourself to make sure that you are just getting linting problems at this point, or you might need to do some other stuff on your own. Unfortunately, I can't um, help with everything. Yeah, quite a few linting problems here. All right, so this is actually a good sign. It looks like it's fixed that I18N problem, and the only problems we're having now are linting related. So what I'm going to do is basically shut down the server again and run yarn lint dash dash fix. So check this out. If I go into my package, dot json file and scroll to the top uh, if you if you're using linting you actually get this out of the box this uh, command that will run lint and also allow you to fix lint if you add this fix flag so let's run that and it's going to go ahead and fix a lot of those linting problems for me now i think the reason i'm getting this error here is because i need to run yarn upgrade to make sure that i'm getting the latest version of es lint and let's come down here and give it another try Oh, and I'm not actually pulling in the right one. So my guess is that I didn't copy paste that pr properly here. I bet you saw that too. <laughs> so there we go. Now let's run yarn again. Now that should give me the latest version. And here we go. It looks like it's actually doing something different this time. Sweet. So that's actually fixed a bunch of the errors for us. So we've only got a few errors showing up now. So I'm actually going to exit out of this console. So I've got a little bit of more room that I can play around with. And let's see if we can deal with these errors one at a time. I'll say quasar dev, just so I can see the errors fixed as I go. It's common that you stop and start your development server quite often when you're running an upgrade. Okay, name slots must use template on a custom element. Right, so let's jump into that. Okay, so this is a custom element and I'm using a template here. Apparently that, uh, sorry, I'm using a name slot here. Apparently that is not allowed and I have to add a template in here. I believe that's what it's saying. So my guess is that they want me to do this template. And then we say, we say hashtag option scope there. And now let's just grab all of this and throw it inside of that template. And there we go. So let's save that and see if it works now. Cool, looks like that's worked. So let's look at the rest of these problems. View router. So that's because the way that we initialize view router with view three is different. That's actually a view three upgrade, not a Quasar related upgrade, but it's still something that we have to do since Quasar now uses view three. This is something related to view X. So view X, once again, uh, the way that most of view plugins, in fact, I'm pretty sure all of view's official plugins are now installed differently. So this is a composition API. I'm trying to use the composition API, however, you have it by default with Vue 3, so I don't have to pull it in anymore. That's probably what that's about. View router again, uh, Vue X. Ah, this is particularly useful. So the update success event has been triggered, but not declared on emits. So what's happening is with Vue 3, whenever you emit an event, you have to say on the component itself that you're going to emit that event. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's jump in here and search for the word emit and so here i'm emitting the update success event 
Now with view three, in order for that to work, I need to basically copy this. Let's scroll up here and say emit, and then we'll pass through an array, and that needs to be included in that array. So basically you need to specify when you're emitting something, you can't just emit things all over the place like you used to be able to. So that's one, um, that's one breaking change that you'll probably run into a bit. So I'm going to save that. In fact, let's go ahead and fix this everywhere. So now we'll go to source, and I might just do a search inside of that folder. Let's search for the word emit, maybe dollar sign emit. And so there's one here, hide and OK are both emitted. So let's scroll up now and say emit, and we'll whack both of those in there. Oh, my lint is not working. That's probably because of the linting updates we've done. We can fix that in a later video. And then this one, I'm pretty sure we already fixed. So let me just copy paste, copy that and search for it. Yeah, that one's already been fixed. So let's come back here now and scroll up. And that's it. So basically, we fixed all of our errors. Oh, actually, we've got this Axios one here that I might fix now. Yeah, because all of the others are view plugin related. But uh, this one is kind of a different case. So let's go ahead and cover that now. Let me open the upgrade guide. And it's in there somewhere. I think if I look for the word global. Yeah, here we go. There's a new way that we actually install global packages. So let's look for another example. Oh, that's the only example. Uh, what I might do is copy that. So I've got that code and paste it in there. And so it looks like instead of saying view.prototype axios we have to add it to app config global properties axios so let's go ahead and do that i probably won't actually be able to test this until later on in the series so i probably shouldn't have done that now but hey it's already done save that and let's come back here and see if that's gone now and it didn't look like it liked my indentations so i think it's accidentally using tabs uh, for some reason, my indentation is being converted from spaces into tabs. So, yeah, you need to watch out for this stuff. It's kind of cool that they give us those errors because it's important stuff to, to fix so that our code is consistent. So the way I can fix that, I think I can say something like, oh, I don't know, spaces, indent, indent using spaces, and make sure that it's two. So now if I press tab, it goes to two spaces, and we need a new line at the end. Yeah, there we go. So a linter would fix all of those problems, but my linter's not working, so we'll have to fix that in the next video as well. But, good news, it looks like all of our problems are just view-related problems, so in the next video we can go ahead and tackle those and see if we can kind of at least get it so that our CLI is running without any errors, and then we'll take it from there.